Yeah. This is really, this comes in handy. I want to actually kind of skip a little bit to art of delivery stuff because I've given you like lots of ways to be gentle, right? Chasing the pain, tearless trauma, container technique, sneaking up, sneaking away, right? You've got a lot of them. And sometimes there's no like right answer. Should I do chasing the pain or tearless trauma? And it's kind of your gut feeling that you're kind of deciding by, but you're on the right track because you know you need more distance. And so you're just gonna pick one out of the box. So don't worry about being perfect at what you pick. If it doesn't work, you just pick the next one. It's all good. And know that, like I said with, with a little bit earlier, you can interject these at any point. So it's not always that your client comes in with their presenting issue. They start to talk about it. They start to get going to say hyper arousal. You pull them back, you sneak away from it or something, or you start to use a gentle technique. And then for the rest of the session, they are in their window of tolerance. Sometimes they, you start working on something, you realize you need a gentle technique to work on it. You use the gentle technique. They're down to three on 10. You go into direct exposure, you work for five minutes, and then they hit another aspect and boom, they spike again. So bring in your gentle technique again for that aspect. Sneak up on the aspect, work on the aspect in a container, use chasing the pain on that particular aspect. See what I mean? And then when they're three on 10 or less on the aspect, do direct exposure on it. And then you go along and along and along and something else comes up and they spike again. Okay, tearless trauma. Okay, chasing the pain. Okay, well, we're just gonna back right off of that one. That one was, whoo. Yeah, see what I'm saying? So you're, you're just always adjusting to your client and that's why you don't have to be like super scared of getting everything right and somehow navigating them through some minefield that you have no idea where the mines are. Boy, oh boy, you do not have to take that level of responsibility. Sometimes your client doesn't even know where those mines are and it's a surprise to both of you when they spike on something. But you have a really comprehensive toolbox. So you don't have to sweat it because you have like 10 different ways to either get them out of there or slowly approach it in a way that their nervous system can handle. Yay. <laughs> so being a great EFT practitioner is all about the art of delivery. And that's this ability to just like choose the tool from the toolbox that helps your clients stay in that Goldilocks zone and get through the stuff as you get more and more and more specific, right? Getting to specific past events. And then within those specific past events, getting to what bothers me about those specific past events. So it's kind of like two things going on at the same time, choose the right tool and get specific enough. If you're using the right tool and you're specific enough, you're going to clear like practically anything and everything. 